Hi folks, welcome to my Epit Retro Journal. So today I got this really cool thing that I got uh, from uh, uh, from Germany. I just came in the mail and I wanted to share that with uh, everyone. Here it is. And um, yeah, let's get started on that. So uh, the thing I got is, um, yeah, so this is the uh, individual item. It's a, it's a ROM cartridge. And uh, so this ROM cartridge is really interesting. So the QL has a has a ROM slot in the back of it, and so this ROM cartridge uh, is supposedly what this does. And I'll have to read more on the um, the manual here, but um, so the specifics. But what it claims to do is that um, it has a, an Amiga Kickstart ROM in here, or a modified Kickstart ROM. I think it's 1.3 and supposedly with extra memory and I got my expander RAM on it. You can also see that I got my disk drive. I had to jerry-rig a cable because mine uh, broke, uh, but this works. I tested it um, uh, with this ROM. So, so what this ROM does is uh, this guy in Germany went through the original Amiga Kickstart ROM. I guess he disassembled it uh, or de deconstructed it and then he um, uh, ended up rerouting or remapping all of the I.O. calls uh, from the Amiga ROM that went to all the specialty chips like the Denise and the Agnes and whatever they are uh, into the QL's um, chips that are obviously not as powerful but that did similar things and then according to um, uh, him that with this and uh, another version of uh, Workbench 1.1 uh, that you can uh, actually boot uh, Amiga Workbench on your Q QL's hardware. So it's not emulation. So there's no software here other than Workbench and this ROM. You plug it into your QL, extra memory, and this will run, albeit slower and, you know, not all the graphics. Um, you can run an Amiga 500 or Amiga 1000, I guess, whatever uh, Kickstart is. So I actually don't believe that, but they claim that's what this does. So I want to give this a try. Um, if you're new to my channel, I thought I'd give you uh, just a quick uh, review of the QL. Um, it was developed in 1983. Uh, you can tell that by the splash screen actually has a copyright date of 1983. And it was released uh, in January on January 12th, 1984. Uh, uh, I think Sinclair Research was proud to, to say that two weeks before the Macintosh, it was supposed to be competitive to the Macintosh. So it was released about a year and a half before the Amiga 1000 was released. It was also the first computer that uh, came with a preemptive micro uh, microkernel, uh, a preemptive multitasking microkernel. So that uh, that was another one of his claim to fame. They they basically developed this to create a workable uh, uh, Unix, as they as their internal notes suggested, it was uh, so. This is the Time Machine Claim 1000 in in the UK. It was called the ZX81. Came out in 1981. That was the pre. That was the um, the precursor. This was the ZX80. So their first machine. It was white. And then um, Rick Dickinson started designing them. Uh, he also is the designer of the Spectrum Next. And so he designed this in the ZX81, which was its uh, original uh, sibling. Uh, and then uh, the ZX uh, Spectrum came after that. I have it. I haven't really worked much with it. I don't even know if this works or not. So that was, um, I think, codenamed ZX2, ZX, I'm sorry, ZX82, and uh, uh, came in 1982. And then this was codenamed ZX83 and was developed in 1983. Um, uh, and then they called it the Sinclair QL. Um, it had the famous micro drives, which are, were developed for both the ZX uh, Spectrum and the QL, but I think uh, they, they were native to the QL <clears throat> as its two, uh, as its two um, uh, drives uh, were part of the unit. The, um, it retailed, I think, for £399 uh, because uh, I recall uh, a year later, it was di discounted to 199 pounds, British pounds. So it was, uh, I don't know what that's in US dollars back then, but maybe $250. Uh, so it was definitely an inexpensive uh, business-like computer. Um, and that's why it's a, a bit surprising that um, uh, this uh, has the potential of running an Amiga natively, because an Amiga 1000, which came 
about a year and a half later, which is actually pretty impressive, which is uh, had a pretty impressive um, uh, uh, set of specs. And of course, a year and a half is also pretty long time in computing. So yeah, so uh, that's why I'm intrigued by seeing if I could run uh, some of the Amiga software on this computer. So in any case, that's uh, sort of a, just a quick breakdown. You can watch some of my other videos to get more details on specifics on the QO. But um, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to install this ROM and there's no mods you need to do. Uh, this ROM takes care of everything. Install this ROM and then see if it boots up and see if I can get Workbench 1.1 to run on my Amiga. Uh, on my uh, run on my QL, uh, turn my QL into an Amiga without any software emulation. So let's get started. So I'm going to have to um, uh, turn my computer off and plug this in. So I'll be back. All right, and I'm back. So I've got the ROM plugged in in the back, and it comes up with the QL boot screen, and it says, "Well, my Kempston disk interface, System 1.4," and then it says, "Amiga Kickstart 1.3 QL ROM version one." Copyright 2020. That's pretty cool. All right, so um, I have my disk, which I'm going to get ready to put in my drive. Um, so this is going to require monitor mode. And again, on my QL and monitor mode, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into monochrome. So I'm going to have to uh, quickly switch this off again to do that. So let me, um, unfortunately, let me come right back again. So I'm going to reboot this in monitor mode and get right back here. I'll plug this in and we'll see if it works. Here we go. This is exciting. So I'm uh, booted up again, uh, this time uh, in monochrome mode. You can see it's a really beautiful screen. Um, the reason I have to turn this off is because when I uh, switch it, uh, there's, a, there's a switch underneath this that I have to um, move. Uh, and uh, it, it's not good to have the cue on while you do that. So uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to hit F1. And uh, I do have my disk in here ready to go. I'm going to hit F1 and uh, let this thing boot and then see what happens. Uh, it's going to be interesting. I mean, it's nice that it's actually showing here, but that's not guaranteed that it works. Uh, but let's see how it goes. So I'm going to hit F1 for um, monitor mode. Here we go. All right. Screen is black. Um, so I don't know if that's what it's supposed to do, but let's wait. All right, the screen has gone to gray, a light gray, and uh, now white. Okay, uh, that's promising, I guess. Uh, I think what we should expect next is the user comes up with a little uh, Amiga disk, I think, unless this expects it. I don't know, maybe it'll have its own uh, um, way it boots up, but uh, it is taking a long time, so that uh, is not necessarily promising news. But oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> oh my God, it's got it. Amiga Workbench version 1.3. All right, I guess what I need to do next is just sort of plug in this disc. Here we go. And uh, the disc light is on and it is going. I don't know if it's supposed to disappear or what, but let's wait. Okay, the, this, the screen has cl uh, cleared again, so um, I, I don't know what to expect next. Usually when I use a, an emulator, it's pretty quick, so I don't really have to sit there. And I don't know how it was for like the Amiga 1000 or the 500, how slow it would be, especially, uh, it doesn't seem to be hitting the disc, especially, oh, 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 look at that. Copyright 1987, Commodore Amiga. It looks like it's also the Amiga font, because that's not the QO font. It says use preference tool. All right. Um, can I move the? Yeah. Uh, move along the top. Yeah, it's. Oh, there's a little bit of lag. All right, and then I want to go down. So yeah, unfortunately. That, no. And uh, okay, yeah, that opened it up. Uh, can I move? Uh, I can, okay, and then move, 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 move. 
it slow as can be. A oh, little bit of, uh, and then you're going to move it down. Did it do it? Yeah, you just have to hit it at the right speed. Okay, so it's, uh, all right, moving this further down. Oh, it, it kind of, it seems like it's getting the wrong, it's getting some noise in the keys because it's kind of moving a little bit. All right, it's moving still a little bit, and then, yeah, so the, oh. Yeah, that opened it up. Okay, will it run? Yes, it will, I think. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, let's see if I can't uh, move this up ever so slightly and then move it to the side. And then, and then can I move this sideways? Yeah, that works. So there's a way to, um, Tweak the uh, uh, I think that you can poke or or, or, or add something into the uh, I think there's a way to configure this uh, via uh, some system calls to uh, uh, fix the uh, the keyboard input stuff so um, okay that's running can I run another thing But you can see that the mouse is jumping around a lot. That's weird. All right, up. So yeah, I now I assume if you have a serial mouse that you can actually. Okay, so. And it's starting that up. I think did it. Uh, or did it just select it one more time? Yeah, I'm just clicking it too fast, so. There we go. So that, that's not the best of interfaces, obviously, but uh, uh, I could use my mouse, uh, my, my joystick, which will probably work better. Oh, so now we have multitasking, look at that. Unfortunately, um, I don't have uh, any um, software for the Amiga that I could try out games, but I mean, this, this looks like it's running pretty slow. I don't know what a, a standard Amiga 1000 or 500 is supposed to run like. I thought when I've run it in the emulator, it runs faster than that. But this is definitely creeping along. But again, I'm running it natively on the QL hardware with this ROM patch that you just take in the back of your QL and you need extra me memory and a disk drive. And uh, it's, uh, it's working, so that's pretty impressive. Um, didn't think the QL had it in it uh, to be able to actually run an Amiga. I mean, I can, you know, for my Amiga viewers, can an Amiga run a QL natively? I know it can be emulated, but this is running it natively because in a QL could, could never run an Amiga emulated because it would be too much over it. But natively, I would have never expected. $25 for that uh, module is pretty impressive. But look at that. Yay, thumbs up, everyone. So thanks for uh, joining me today. Um, uh, and uh, I will put links of whoever this is in the in my description. Anyway, um, thanks for uh, um, watching my video today. Happy April first! Um, oh, oh, April first. Uh, yeah, um, I I hate to do this to folks. I know you're probably not super excited, but uh, uh, I'm running Win UAE here. <laughs> Just playing a little uh, April Fool's prank on you. Um, I please don't be angry at me. In fact, um, uh, if you watch Retro Recipes, Chris Simpson, Perry Fratrix, he's to blame for this because the last um, two April first, he he has fooled me. And every time I I, I look back and I, I, how could I not have remembered this was April first? I think last year he did a, a video on, on reading a game from a postcard using a light pin because it had a pattern on there and then and then I freaked out as he did when his computer sparked and then at the end when he smiled and said April 1st I was like oh you got to be kidding me so I, I thought this year I would I would try my own hand at it and I figured why not 
the QL running in Amiga, that was never going to happen. The, the QL actually, the, the cartridge I had was just, uh, the ROM is, is just the, the ICE uh, ROM. Uh, so I came up with a nice story. But um, again, uh, I, I, I'm sorry if, <laughs> if I had you going there. I'm sure you were wondering, can it be? Uh, the Amiga is much more powerful than the QL, and there's no ROM patch that could possibly fix that. But anyway, I hope you appreciated my uh, my my trip uh, uh, through a, a little bit of humor for April first. Uh, take your mind off uh, things like the pandemic, which is um, uh, or the, this past year, I should say, uh, as things are uh, um, hopefully getting back to normal soon. But um, uh, yes, so the QL cannot run the Amiga natively. Uh, the Amiga might be able to run the QL natively, but not vice versa. Anyway, thanks for, uh, so this is just a, a, a composite uh, from my, um, so if I were to show you what's going on here, actually, um, the, uh, I've got it running on my, uh, oops, um, on my Macintosh, you can see that. Uh, um, and I actually, uh, if you're really curious, uh, I had to work at uh, creating a fake, uh, that's my fake screen. It's actually, a, um, it's a basic program that, uh, yeah, <laughs> just does that. And then got my Amiga in monochrome mode and, and actually slowed it down tremendously. So a little bit behind the scenes of what I did. Anyway, uh, I, I promise I won't do it again until maybe next April, but uh, we'll see uh, what the response here is. Thanks for uh, joining me today. I, I hope you continue to stay safe and uh, come back and watch some of my future QL videos. All right, take care.